Welcome to the Bookman's Corner. I'm Lois Lindstrom. Today we have a not-to-be-missed book discussion about where you live, Arlington County, Virginia. At 26.5 square miles, Arlington is the smallest, most densely populated county in the United States, and its destiny has been driven by the geographic proximity to Washington, D.C. We are very pleased to have local author and historian Charlie Clark, who will discuss his new book, Hidden History of Arlington County. Charlie, welcome to our show. Happy to be here, Lois. Charlie Clark is a longtime resident of Arlington who, we, who writes the weekly Iron Man and Arlington column for the Falls Church News Press and is a former Washington Post editor, among many other journalistic positions. Charlie, what is your favorite hidden historical fact about Arlington? Mm -hmm. Probably the George Washington survey tree where oh, yeah. the, the father <laughs> of our country uh, was documented to have been in Arlington. It's over off of Carlin Spring Road in the uh, Long Branch Nature Center mm -hmm. uh, tra trail and uh, there's a, uh, a monument that's very marred and difficult to read but so a lot of people just walk right by it and don't see it. And the actual survey tree which is mentioned in Washington's diaries and in other s sources from the 18th century there's a slice of that tree varnished and on display at the Carlin Springs Library. So many residents should take a walk and look at that tree, don't exactly, you think? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And uh, what about the English roots of our county's name, Arlington? Yeah. Well, there's a little bit of dispute over it, but George Washington Park Custis, who built Arlington House, mm -hmm. uh, named it for the plantation on the eastern shore of Virginia, where a lot of Custis descendants still live. Mm -hmm. And that plantation on the eastern shore was uh, built in the 17th century by Custis's from England, who named it for a village in Gloucester, England. There's also an Earl of Arlington over there in England okay. at the time that some people think that his name may have something to do with it. Interesting, so. interesting. Now, what exactly, when exactly did Arlington become a part of the state of Virginia? Because it was connected with a district somehow, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that would be in, uh, in the district was created mm -hmm. after much negotiation and moving the capital from New, New York, York, Philly, yeah. and then to here. Uh, 1797, it was originally part of the diamond-shaped uh, area for the District of Columbia. And then in 1846, what they call retrocession, mm -hmm. uh, the Virginians decided they weren't getting enough of uh, federal buildings in, in, in on their probably. land, and there was some <laughs> anticipation that the slavery issue was about to divide the mm -hmm. North from the South. So uh, they voted uh, in a referendum to uh, secede from the district, and it became what's called Alexandria County, which includes today's Arlington and mm -hmm. uh, Alexandria a City and mm -hmm. the, the Fairfax section of uh, uh, Alexandria. And then in 1920, uh, Arlingtonians were tired of, of being confused with Alexandria, uh, with Alexandria Old Town, so mm -hmm. uh, the legislature uh, uh, passed a bill to uh, create Arlington County as independent from Alexandria. Good, good, good. Now, in your reporting for this book, you uncovered some amazing private documents. I mean, what did you learn about the Washington Golf and Country Club, founded in 1894? Yes. Well, the club, uh, one of the fun facts that I have up front is that there were five U.S. presidents who were members of that club, and there's a directory that still exists from 1920 that has everybody's home address, and one of the entries says, Woodrow Wilson, the White House. <laughs> but I, I also have a chapter on uh, the picketing of the Washington Golf and Country Club that some high school mates and I uh, did in 1968. It was over... Uh, Vietnam? Se se well, it was over segregation. Oh, segregation, The, the okay. club did not allow black members, but okay. not only members, they didn't even want to participate in a tennis league with other clubs if a black player was on the other team. Yes. So that got reported and uh, we had about 60 or 70 uh, high school kids uh, picketing the club and we got on the news and uh, of course things have changed a lot since then and I, I have many friends at the club and have enjoyed their sure, hospitality. Sure. So it was a different era. Yes. Now, what did you learn about famed Watergate reporter Bob Woodward of the Washington Post, who wrote that he used to meet his highly placed source, nicknamed Deep Throat, in a parking garage in Arlington? Yeah. Can you elaborate? Yeah, well, this is uh, not a, a, a secret really now, but it was a secret for many, many years, of course. 
uh, that the parking garage at uh, the 1500 block of Wilson Boulevard in Roslyn was, was where Woodward met his source. And, of course, that source, Mark Felt, is the subject of a movie that will sure. be out in December. Yes, yes. So uh, when Woodward divulged this uh, in his book called uh, the, S the Secret Man, I think, uh, uh, they put a plaque up there. It's Monday Properties. It's the mm -hmm. landlord company that mm -hmm. owns the, the parking garage, and they're planning to tear it down. This is what... Uh, I'm reporting in the book, um, but they plan to keep a the, plaque. the plaque that's still there on Nash Street that tells you this whole background yes, story. Yes, yes. So. And it was also fun to read about, you know, since you grew up in Arlington, about the, the, about the steepest hill in Arlington and how it was used by teenage drivers in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. <laughs> so it's over off mm -hmm. Nellie Custis Drive on Quebec Street. And uh, uh, many of us, when we first got our licenses, that's the first thing we wanted to do was go <laughs> speed down this steep hill. And uh, a little bit later, I, as I recall, they uh, changed it to a one-way street going up mm -hmm. as a safety precaution. But that's been reversed now, and now it's still the, a, a beautiful street with a lot of kind of upscale homes over uh, by the Potomac. Yes, yes. And uh, now, now, briefly, what is the history behind the Twin Bridges Marriott in Arlington? Because yeah. that's an interesting... Uh, well, the, the Marriott chain, which is, of course, worldwide now and, and mm -hmm. started out as a, uh, you know, a fast food stand and a, a <laughs> hot shops. And, but it, um, uh, the first motor hotel in that chain was where today's 14th Street Bridge and the G George Washington Parkway is. It's now just sort of a, uh, a green uh, uh, palouse. But, uh, and motor hotels, of course, in the 50s when the interstate highways were, were yes. being built was a, was a real novelty for people. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of photographs of uh, uh, gl glamour girls and cars and poolside people at that Twin Bridges Marriott. And in uh, 1979, I believe, uh, baby boomers will recall uh, that the rock and roll guitarist Lowell George of Little Feet uh, died in that hotel in mm. a room of a apparent heart attack. And uh, it was torn down, I believe, in 1998. Okay. Yes. Now, let's turn back, let's turn the page back to the past and George Washington. I mean, what were some of his activities in Arlington? Well, he owned, uh, you know, inherited from, uh, from his uh, Martha Washington's family, mm -hmm. too, uh, a lot of the land that would later uh, be inherited by George Washington Park Custis, who is his step grandson right that remember uh, Washington uh, had right. no natural right. children that was uh, the wife's son yes. yeah so uh, uh, and he uh, a lot of Fairfax and Arlington and parts of Alexandria would the reason he uh, needed the survey tree over off Carlin Springs Road is that he needed timber to fuel uh, Mount Vernon okay so it, was, so it came from here right yes. Now, now, what about the Arlington on, on postage stamps? I, I found your reporting on this very interesting. What are the facts about the postage stamps? Well, it, it's odd. I would have thought that Arlington would have been on lots of postage stamps, but there were actually <laughs> slightly fewer. The, the one that I publish in the book is the amphitheater of Arlington Cemetery, which, uh, as we're reminded in this uh, 100th anniversary of World War I that mm -hmm. we're in right now, is that Arlington Cemetery, even though it was created uh, during and after the Civil War, really got expanded uh, after World War I. So that's why that big amphitheater was built, and that's why they did a special postage stamp for it. Okay, and I, and I have yeah. another question about okay. that, too. Yeah. Now, now, what happened during the Civil War? Uh, did Arlington align with the North, and how did it fare during the Civil War? Well, like Northern Virginia today, Arlington uh, differed from the deeper rest. south parts of Virginia. So it was the, I believe, the only county that, that in the re referendum would vo or voted for the candidates who were against seceding. Right. And uh, it would go on in later years to, to be a sort of a uh, off the beaten track or, or mm -hmm. different from the rest of the state. And uh, there wasn't any uh, battle action in Arlington during the Civil War, but it was a big pass through mm -hmm. site. And uh, during the Battle of Bull Run and after, uh, you know, Lincoln came to. Arlington, and uh, uh, there was the Upton Hill uh, f Fort, which is uh, mm -hmm. today Upton Hill Regional Park, uh, where, which was a Confederate uh, outpost for a few months in, okay. in 1861, and they had these fake cannon. They're called Quaker cannon. You can still <laughs> see replicas of them there today, but they're just logs painted brown so that 
through binoculars from a distance they look like cannons. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Now, what is the, now let's, what is the significance of Arlington House? I mean, tell us why Robert E. Lee never saw his mansion again. Well, he married into the George Washington Park Custis's family, his daughter, I think in the 1830s. Mm -hmm. And then Lee was, of course, you know, a West Point graduate, and he was uh, traveling and uh, was posted in various sites, so he didn't spend that much time in the house itself. He inherited it in 1857 when George Washington Park Custis dies. And uh, he had to deal with the slaves that were there. He was their owner for a while. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when the war broke out and he made this monumental decision to s serve the South, right. instead, uh, he would never return there. And uh, his wife and their sons later in the 1880s won a Supreme Court case to uh, be rec recompensed for the, uh, the Union having taken the property to uh, create a, a cemetery. To, to, to bury yeah. the, the dead, yeah. right, from yeah. the Civil War. Um, now, what about Abington Plantation, which is regarded as the oldest house in Arlington, built in 1741? Yeah, so if you go to National Airport, especially if you park your car there, mm -hmm. but you can see it on the Metro, too, you'll see signs direct suggesting that you might want to visit Abington Plantation, which uh, is the ruins are recreated and they and they have with the bricks from on the original layout of the house and uh, it was uh, the Custis family uh, George Washington stayed there many nights and uh, this would be George Washington Park Custis's father who was there Nellie Custis's mm -hmm. sister who mm -hmm. was famously raised at Mount Vernon too with him she was born there okay and uh, their father died uh, in uh, the Revolutionary War which is why they ended up being raised at Mount Vernon interesting now, yeah. now what about the uh, the Maple Shade House which was originally a cotton farm of 177 acres between modern Lexington Street and yeah. Quantico yeah so uh, that house was built right before the Civil War, and uh, Henry Febri, uh, was, uh, who's the son of Nicholas Febri, who was one of the biggest landowners in Arlington in the early 18th, uh, 19th century, mm -hmm. who, who bought his property directly from George Washington Park Custis, and they were friends. In fact, there may be a more complicated relationship there. So that house um, was a, a cotton farm where, where slaves were employed, and it was added on to, and in the 50s, uh, it was uh, surrounded by a, a subdivision, and today it's owned by the Etkin family. And uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's part, it's part of the history. Yeah. yeah. Now there, there were uh, many. Of course, there have been many very creative people from Arlington, Virginia. Uh, you wrote in a, the, a 1950s hit Broadway musical, "Damn Yankees," was written in Arlington, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, what other entertainment personalities with connections to Arlington are in your book? Well, I mean, a lot of people remember that Shirley MacLaine and Warren Beatty mm -hmm. or Washington Lee. But they are uh, not in this right. book. Well, they're in my other book called Arlington County Chronicles. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the ones in this book, let's see, I, I, I talk about the, the beauty queen, Ga uh, Gail yeah. Renshaw, right. who was Miss America uh, in the mid-60s at age 19, and she went out to Las Vegas and Dean Martin, who was about 30 years older than she and married, uh, <laughs> took, proposed took, marriage to her. <laughs> and took and, a shining to her, right? Yeah, so, and they, she, they were engaged for, I think, about a week or so. Yes, until the parents said, no, yeah, no. We yeah. But I had a good time interviewing her. She lives down in Florida, and she mm -hmm. has fond memories of graduating from uh, Wilson School in Stratford and Washington Lee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move back in time to the 60s. I mean, what happened when Wakefield High School was integrated in 1964. Yes. Well, you had the all-black high school, Hoffman, Boston, which traces its roots way back to the 19-teens and 20s. It started out as an elementary school, and it was the only real black school in Arlington. And uh, it had a, a proud heritage. They had a, a football team that I think went undefeated in 1961, mm. when the sports were still segregated at mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. And so Wakefield High School was built in the mid-1950s. And in 1964, uh, you know, this is after the big desegregation battle that ended up at a, a, there was a Supreme Court case in 1954, and then that led to the Virginia massive resistance to desegregation and a, another court ruling in 1959. Mm -hmm. So by 1964, the county decided that they would close Hoff in Boston and integrate it with Wakefield. And uh, there was tension. Uh, the sports teams ended up being kind of a bridge 
uh, between the cultures because they had played together on playgrounds like okay. at Walter Reed. And then, so uh, that, that transition was smooth with, with the sports Relatively team. speaking, but there's mm -hmm. a book about it, which mm -hmm. I use. Uh, they okay. interviewed a lot of the people. And the homecoming dance, uh, there's a picture in the book that shows both black and white kids there dancing, which in 1964 was really groundbreaking. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. So. Now, what do you think, um, what is Arlington County's best hidden landmark, you think? <laughs> well, I would say that the George Washington survey tree is that the is one the, the most that, off the beaten that track. Is, that is the one that no yeah. one really knows about. You wrote that a chapter about rem remembering East Arlington and, and in the fever of preparing for World War II, the War Department used eminent domain to clear a 27-acre neighborhood mm -hmm. of largely um, powerless minorities and they were forced to, to, to scramble for new housing right. and livelihoods. I mean, can you tell us more about sure. that? Sure. Well, there's a chain of history going back to, this, to the Civil War. With, with emancipation, Freeman's Village was created right about where the Sheraton Hotel is today on Washington Boulevard. Okay. So that was freed blacks with their own community and crafts and stores. Uh, it didn't last, uh, it didn't get too much support from the local jurisdictions. Uh, and so it evolved into the black neighborhoods called Queen City and then East Arlington. Or r roughly the same mm -hmm. neighborhood. So when World War II was ga the storm was gathering, mm -hmm. uh, the federal government knew they needed to create a new office for the war, what was then called the War Department. So that would be the Pentagon, so right? They, yeah. So they commandeered that land uh, in Arlington to build the Pentagon, and in order to have the access roads yeah. to the Pentagon, they had to demolish the East Arlington and. Uh, 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 there's a historian, uh, Nancy uh, Ellis, who did a lot of the research for that, yes, which I yes. give her credit. It's, so, and then, uh, and also, you had uh, there's so much. Arlington has so many uh, interesting facets, like the the CNO Canal memories of that you have in this book. Yeah. And you, you went down there a lot, right? Yeah. Well, it's fun. You know, I learned when I was a child that the CNO Canal was built, and you know, in the uh, early 19th century, it was 180 miles long, and it ended in Cumberland, uh, Maryland, which I had never visited until mm -hmm. until recently. But there were two two memories. I lived in Rivercrest neighborhood, which is walking distance to Chain Bridge, and at the side of Chain Bridge, they had a bait and tackle shop with which sell you Pepsi's and candy and. Uh, it goes back to the 1930s. I have a picture of it in the 1930s where it says beer and the Shell station. It was also an Amico station for a while. And we used to, there was a gentleman who ran it. We called him the captain. Whether he was really a captain, we don't really know. So you did a lot of fishing then. Yeah. So then we would buy uh, worms there and, and then walk across to the canal and do oh, our fishing. Oh, that's so, that's so neat. Yeah. And then, um, and you wrote that decades before Claritin became the pub crawl for Arlington 20-somethings, it was known as Little Saigon. The Vietnamese arrived in two waves in the 1970s. Um, what was the reaction of Arlington to, the, well, to these immigrants? Well, if you think of what's happening today with the Syrian refugees and the uh, reluctance to, uh, of many Americans to uh, take uh, a bigger share of them, uh, at the time, 1975, when the America was still divided over the Vietnam War and there was uh, a fear of uh, a mass immigration, uh, but America was really the, uh, the best destination for a lot of these uh, boat people, they were called, that were mm -hmm. escaping the communist regime in Vietnam. So a lot of them, they settled in many states. There were certain staging areas, towns that were picked to, where mm -hmm. they would arrive uh, mm -hmm. immediately and then be dispatched somewhere. So a lot of them ended up in Arlington and they, in the, uh, on Wilson Boulevard in Clarendon, the rents were very cheap back then. Okay. And so Wilson Boulevard at one point was nicknamed the Ho Chi Minh Trail. By, by, <laughs> Jim Trail by that's us. right. But, but they didn't stay though. They ended up right. leaving. So, right. So well they, they set up very successful restaurants and nail general salons stores. And yeah. yeah. Nail salons. And it lasted uh, into the 90s. And then when, when Metro really got going and the 20-somethings the, the started to consider Clarendon more of a bar scene right. and the rents went up yes. and uh, the Vietnamese left and uh, many of them settled uh, further down Wilson Boulevard near the Seven Corners uh, intersection at the Eden Center. Hmm. Now it was also interesting to read about the vast number of churches in Arlington. I mean how many churches are there and what is the, oh. m what's the major religion you think? Well I think it's, it's over a hundred. I mean of course it was... Over a hundred well, a small I think area. that's right, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the Pro Protestant church, Episcopalian church was obviously the major uh, but I give dates on when these well, the Methodists and the Presbyterians arrived and when the first Catholic church, which is St. Yeah. Charles over here. 
And uh, one of the oldest churches was George Washington Park Custis's chapel, which is right there at, at Washington Boulevard and uh, Columbia Pike, where, near where the Sheraton Hotel again is. There's a plaque for it. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, you had a cool story on page 93 of your book about Wilson Pickett, a soul singer famous for the Midnight Hour and Mustang Sally, who, who travels to Yorktown High School in 1969 to play. Yeah. How, are you involved in this? Well, I was a sophomore at the time, but I knew all the seniors who were involved in this. It, it was a little bit of a racial controversy in the school about there was rumors that the, they needed a band for the end of the year celebration and maybe they could have gotten the Doors or some other sort of <laughs> band that a lot of white kids like. But the student council president made a special effort to a gesture of interracial uh, quality and uh, of course Wilson Pickett was hugely popular and everybody yes, loved his music. Yes, I mean his so music was incredible. They was successfully recruited him and he came with his opening act was Florence Ballard who used to be in the Supremes mm -hmm. and they used the Yorktown High School locker room, gym locker rooms as their dressing rooms wow. and it, of course it, it's, it, it, it didn't quite sell out and it might have lost a little bit of money so there was a little bit of lingering <laughs> resentment after that but nobody's ever forgotten this episode. Absolutely, at absolutely not. Yeah. And then you wrote in, that in June of 2016 uh, we marked the 50th anniversary of Arlington's noblest institution, the Golf Branch Nature <laughs> Center. Uh, but that, that was almost closed because of budget cuts. But, right. that's a, but I remember that that nature center from living yeah. in McLean. Well, I use the word noblest a little bit tongue in cheek because it's one of my favorite places uh, and it's uh, not, people in other parts of the county aren't necessarily aware of Golf Branch, but it's right near where I grew up. And it, the house was built in the 20s and in the 1930s it was rented, we're pretty sure, by this famous silent screen actress named Pola Negri who was a paramour of Charlie Chaplin and uh, Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> And then a private family's owned it, and I, I uh, discovered through a friend some uh, pictures of the way it looked in the late 1930s and early 40s, which we published last year. And the family, I used to deliver the Washington Post there when I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. right when it was uh, mm -hmm. ending its uh, time as a private home. So the county, when the environmental movement was going in the early 60s, and no one knew what a nature center was, <laughs> some uh, far-sighted uh, environmentalists and county board people uh, decide the county should invest in this property and they bought it from the Davis family. Isn't that great that they did that? That's right. Oh my gosh. And so the reason that it almost shut down, that, ca that came in, in, in uh, about 10 years ago, uh, is that there's a, there is a nature center uh, less than a mile away off mm -hmm. Marcy Road, the Potomac Overlook Park, mm -hmm. which is run by Fairfax. And so there was some logic to the county's, uh, in their budget crunch during the recession, Huh. that they uh, maybe we don't need to staff two nature centers but there was such an outpouring of local loyalty to Golf Branch that they eventually uh, reduced the proposals to just scaling it back by a couple staffers and low, uh, well, that was good they did that. keep it going that's yeah. right and then of course you mentioned the the hurricanes because well, the hurricanes have been in the news lately but the uh, Hurricane Agnes uh, hit hit um, in June of 1972 and involved four days of rain mm -hmm. And what was the impact on Arlington? Well, uh, most people who were around back then will never forget it. At the time, it was one of the, uh, the hardest hitting hurricanes in Ever, our region. Right? Yeah, and there's a famous picture of Richard Nixon in a helicopter go flying over Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, which got the worst of it, I think. But in Arlington, uh, the biggest, uh, I mean, I had my personal memories of it when a, a brick came flying through our, the window in the middle of the night and our retaining wall had given way and mm. s smashed a window and almost hit our house guests, and that's a personal <laughs> story, but from the county's <laughs> point of view, the uh, Arlandria area, which used to flood all the time, and this is a, where South Glebe Road and a four mile run and it goes over into Alexandria. Uh, after Hurricane Agnes, they decided they really had to do something, get some federal money. So they shorted it up. Shorted basically. it up, and yeah. they built a bridge over Walter Reed Drive over four mile run that is today the gateway into Sherlington. You really wouldn't have the Sherlington Village ah, accessible to everybody if you, you didn't have that bridge. And, and then um, you, you also wrote another hidden historical fact that golf legend Arnold Palmer actually got married at the Re Resurrection Lutheran Church in Arlington, yeah. not in Falls Church as but many Well, this was, I was able to correct the historical record on this, but. I was told this by a member of the Resurrection Lutheran Church. So when I got in touch with the Arnold Palmer people and looked in biographies of him and 
on the website, they all had him having been married in Falls Church. This is 1953, year four. Before, yeah. And he's, he's a professional golfer at this time, but he's not a household name yet. He'd been a star yes, at Wake right, Forest. Right, 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 right. So the issue was, why, shouldn't this, if this is a big fancy wedding, shouldn't it be all written up in the Washington Post style section? Well, the answer was no. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, I learned, that he eloped. <laughs> he eloped, that's right, that's yeah, right. So they just drove south because uh, the, the wife's father did not approve of him. And so they just pulled over at this Lutheran church and signed the register, and we have proof of it in the book. That's so, good. You're setting the record yeah. straight. And also in, the, in your book, I thought it was great, the response to 9-11, because in Arlington it was, a, it was a big impact because of yeah. what happened at the Pentagon, right? Yes. Well, uh, Jim Schwartz, who's now the, the de deputy county manager, was uh, the fire chief, and he, he gave a good talk on this. You know, of course, Arlington was one of three sites directly affected by the 9-11 attacks. And uh, the emergency response teams in Arlington and Fairfax that serviced the Pentagon became national models. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he, so he, he just g gave a lot of dramatic details of how uh, uh, the, you didn't know who, who had done it and you, you still had live fires inside the Pentagon, and, and Donald Rumsfeld, you remember, was shown car carrying, pe ferrying people out. Yes. So uh, the, the national panic, uh, New York got a lot more coverage, but Arlington really had a key role well, in it. Exactly. It was very powerful. Yeah. And then, and then your, 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 one of your final chapters is our grimier, our grimier side, yeah. <laughs> and you talk about the brothels. <laughs> What the brothel that uh, was the the brothel keeper Mary Hall? Yes, so <laughs> the Hall family is quite interesting. Uh, her, her brother Basil Hall was a plantation owner for whom Hall's Hill, the black neighborhood, takes its name. And Mary Hall was uh, uh, the bro kept a brothel on what is now the National Mall in uh, about where the uh, Museum of the American Indian is, and it was very profitable. So she bought a summer place in the suburb, which is now Arlington, which became the... Uh, uh, the Red Light District? Well, no, <laughs> it became the Washington Golf and Country Club. Oh, and okay. the, the whole Marymount area was her property at the time, in the middle of the 19th century, yeah, uh, yeah. late 19th century. And it shows up on the plats and everything yes, with her yes, name yes. on it. Yeah. Well, this has been such a fabulous conversation with you, Charlie Clark, about your great book, Hidden His History of Arlington County. And where can our viewers in Arlington find this book? Well, it's in all the local bookstores, including One More Page and the Barnes and Nobles. It's at Ayers, and it's at uh, the Photoscope. Uh, Photoshop carries it, too, I'm pleased to say. Good, good. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being a guest it's on It's on our Amazon, show. too. You can order it online. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us again next month for a new edition of the Bookman's Corner. I'm Lois Lindstrom.